in about 2019, I was diagnosed as autistic and I'd studied pregnancy and early parenthood for about a decade before this. And actually my own experience of maternity care was what led me to think, you know, what do we know about autistic people's experiences of the maternity period? We'll be looking to see what are the reproductive health needs of autistic people with wombs. Because at the moment, we really just don't know very much at all. And we're looking all the way from teenagers starting their periods to later in life when people go through the menopause. And then we can make recommendations about how that needs to improve to better meet the needs of autistic people. If the environment matches an autistic person's needs, they'll appear to be doing really well because that environment is setting them up for success. But actually, if that environment doesn't meet their needs, then that person will either need to mask, and that's like pretending to be neurotypical, and it takes a lot of energy. We know ordinarily autistic people tend to either be hypo or hyper aware of the sensory environment. So things like bright lights, loud noises, the feeling of stuff against your skin. And actually that increases for autistic people during pregnancy. We also know that pain is inadequately treated by health professionals in autistic people. It's pretty hard to communicate when you're in labour anyway, let alone if you're then being told you have to change the way you fundamentally communicate your experiences while going through that. But providing healthcare providers with the tools to actually be able to care for their autistic patients in a, an appropriate manner, to be able to perhaps change the way they communicate with people who perhaps don't know that they're autistic. You know, so many autistic mothers are not diagnosed until their children are diagnosed. So when going through that sort of maternity process, being able to sort of not have to rely on that disclosure of a diagnosis, for example, and just say, you know, some people might need X, Y, and Z communicated to them. There's nothing more alienating than not understanding the language that people are using around you, which I suppose is kind of like the autistic experience, but this should be, <laughs> this should be a space where that doesn't happen. When companies or like health organisations specifically go out of the way to put in autism-friendly um, changes, the changes that they make are people-friendly changes. They actually benefit everyone. And I think there's lots that people can learn uh, from us. I see discovery research as looking at the potential in researchers and research teams and thinking that even if the exact thing doesn't work, we're still going to get something really interesting out of it. What we're doing in this project is saying not just nothing about us without us, but let us lead this research. We're the best place people to put forward recommendations for how to improve our lives. And I think in the future, we'll be finding much more that neurodivergent people will be leading research about themselves. <laughs>